sometimes the simplest projects are just the best. I have so much enjoyed doing this project. Tiny little birds in a collage. Sounds quite complicated. It really isn't. It's dead easy. Welcome to Doodle Club <laughs> with me, Kate Field. I'm an artist, teacher and speaker and passionate about helping people find their creative spirit and helping those people who actually are working with others like young children or their grandchildren and things like that. So I run a class um, in Axminster near to where I live in southwest England and I've done this with them and they've loved it and I thought you might like it too. So just a very big welcome back to those lovely people who watch me every week. I release tutorials on a Monday and a Friday and I have just started Wednesday Wandering, which is me wandering about stuff, not just wandering off. Um, I go off onto little tangents as well, but mainly I will chat about art and art teaching and well-being and creativity and all of that kind of stuff. So you might want to join me for that as well. So are you ready? Let's go. This is such a fun project. I'm doing it with my little ones at the moment and uh, they're loving it and creating some gorgeous little birds. And there are so many things that you could do with this. And I am going to show you that at the end. Now, you're not going to need very much at all. And if you've watched any of my earlier tutorials, you might have some leftover collage papers. So we could, you could definitely use those. These are where I use up odds and ends of paint. And then I think... What am I going to do with those? And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those. But if you haven't got those, don't worry, because we're going to make some papers. We are going to use poster paint for this project. So you don't need to need, need anything fancy. Now, these I bought for a pound and they are pretty good, as you will see. I am just using copier paper. So again, nothing fancy. You could use... Um, wallpaper lining paper, um, any sort of scraps really that you've got left over. I'm just going to create um, a background very quickly. Um, just to think about what colours I want to use. We just kind of use up whatever you have. The key to this bit <laughs> is to work quickly. And this is great when you're working with, with children. And I know that there's quite a few of you that work with your own children, your grandchildren, and some of you are um, home educating, and that's just lovely. And you could do this with them. Uh, my youngest, the youngest in my class, is four, and, uh, and she's great. She will do all of these. Yeah, I'm just putting that like this. Now, if you've got quite a lot on your palette then you could just do some more. So, and these will be used later and you can just put them to all sorts of use. So say I have lots of um, collage tutorials uh, that you could, you could have a look at. I'll put the, um, the playlist below. When we're working with um, poster paint or ready mixed paint, it's not as thick as acrylic. So you're not going to get the same sorts of effects but you are going to get some really good results. And you know, for this project, it's perfect. You don't need to use sort of expensive acrylic paint. So if you're new to art and you just want to try out something, then you know, go to your um, pound shop or dollar store or whatever you have in your area just have a look at some of the, the uh, really cheap paints. Um, it's a great way to try out new things. So I'm just sort of putting those together. Remember, if you put all of the colours of the, uh, um, all the primary colours together, you'll just get brown, which which be great if that's what you want. I'm going to leave these to dry for probably 10 minutes or so. They won't take much lo much longer than that. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you something else. <laughs> 
So this can get messy, so make sure that you've got lots of newspaper down and things like that. And you're also going to need a few sheets of very cheap paper. Again, I am just using copier paper. I've put some blobs of paint down on one side and I've just got a bit of bit of card. You could use a bit of cardboard. That would work as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to scrape across the surface. You're going to end up with some things there. I'm just going to put that one to one side for a minute. Bring in this new piece of paper. Scrape the rest of that across. Let's mix this up just a little bit. Put some bits on there. Just you don't want to mix it too much because you want to get those. I might just do some down there. I'm going to leave that one to dry. I'm going to go back to the first one where I've got these blobs still here. I'm just going to pick that up and again just putting some. <laughs> lines and squiggles just to create a really interesting background like that. Use the card just to fill up some of the space. Look at that, how fun is that? I've still got quite a bit on there. I'm just going to leave that to one side. So we're going to come back to this one. This was me just using up some bits of paint. I created these using um, a toilet roll. Just got this leftover bit and I'm just going to put some paint on here. Now because this is poster paint it's thin so it won't cover what uh, is already on there as acrylic would but you can see it's just kind of made it a little bit more interesting and I'm going to use this for my birds, like that. How simple is that? So I always make sure that I'm, I've got something to do while I'm waiting for things to dry. Sometimes that's me going for a cup of coffee, <laughs> which is a very nice thing to do. Right. So I'm gonna, I'll be using that, that piece of card as well. So I'm going to leave that one to dry as well. So once all your pieces are dry, what we're going to do is to cut out the shapes. Now we can get really distracted by the patterns on our papers. So what I suggest you do is you turn it over the other way. And we want to cut out quite a few and we don't want to think about it too much. So we're folding it in half, fold it again, I'm going to get my scissors and we're just going to cut out freehand kind of oval shapes that may have a little point at the end so you get that kind of shape like a teardrop that kind of shape we're not turning them around yet oh no so they're kind of like ovals sort of just a few like this and these are going to be the bodies of our little birds. Here we go. Obviously, little, if you're doing this with very young children, they might need a little bit of help. But because it doesn't have to be absolutely accurate, it's a great way of uh, just teaching fine motor skills, isn't it? So just like little teardrops, that's, that's what we're doing. We're just sort of taking... Taking our leftover bits, not thinking about it too much, and creating some teardrops, some bigger than others. I'm just going to put that one, and I'm not looking at them yet <laughs> because of the state of this. Oh my goodness. Right, let's have a look at this one. Let's just fold that one up. Again. Depending on how thick the paper is, is going to be dependent on uh, how much you can cut out at one time. Let's do that. Like this. 
So what you're going to do, I'll just put a, a clean sheet there. It was annoying me a little bit. And um, so what you're going to end up with are these teardrop shapes like this. Let's just turn them, turn these ones all over. And these are going to turn into your little birds. Some will just be blank because there was nothing on. This. Oh no, that's is that joined together? Yes, it is. There we go. Um, so you're going to end up with these these shapes like that. And some some will be more interesting than others, but you get the idea. Okay, let's just move these ones out of the way. And I'll show you the basic structure. So you're going to take, let's just take one. Let's, let's take this one. I think you might be able to see it a little bit more clearly. Now, look at the shape of it and think about which way round you want your little bird to go. So, for example, this could be, let me just do a little, little marker pen here. This could be there's a little beak there yeah the top of your bird with your little wing there it could be round that way and then what you're going to do is take the smaller piece and that's going to be the tail that's kind of how it works but we could also say this one with that like pointy bit there have it this way round and that could be the tail there are so many different ways and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a look through all the shapes that I have. See this one, I didn't cut that out very well because it obviously just got missed. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make this one into more of a tail. So I'm going to cut it into two. Let me see that. Let's see if I do that one there. And then this one. There we go. And make that one into a little tail like that and then I'm going to put the eye here and then I can do like a little beak there so play around with it and this is this is the fun this is the fun thing now you could stick them onto a plain sheet of paper and that could work really well so that's what I did with these ones just stuck them on just with very simple um, glue stick. Again, nothing fancy. But the other thing that you can do is to put them onto a background. So I've used poster paint again, scraped across the page, left it to dry. And then what I'm going to do is to put my little birds on the background. And again, this is quite a good exercise in looking at composition. Let's just pop that one like, like that. Trying, trying out colours, thinking about what colours would be fun. But you could also have, as I think I'm going to do on this one, we're going to have all these little birds sitting on a line as if they're on a telegraph wire. I think that would be, that would be fun. So that was a little bit pale. I don't think that's going to work very well, that one. This one, this one might work. Let's cut this one. Just sort of, again, these sort of teardrop, teardrop shapes make um, really good, fun birds, I think. I'm just going to do these three because you will get the idea um, and again, you can have the pointy end as the, as the beak or as the tail. Either way is fun. And there's no right or wrong. You do whatever you think is going to work. I think I'll have two rows. I'm going to do two rows. <laughs> and I will show you what they look like in a moment. I've stuck a few of them onto the background and I'm now just going to use my acrylic marker. You could use 
Sharpie pen or a black felt tip pen. Yeah, whatever you have. I'm just sort of putting in a few little details. Um, again, it's just about you having some fun, really. I'm going to have them all with their, their little mouths open as if they're singing. I thought that, that would be fun. Let's just put a few things. So I'm going to put the little feet in because the feet are going to be on a line. So they need to be on the same line, I think. Here we go. Let's just pop that one in. Like that. And then this one can have his little feet there. Um, and then, yeah, we just carry on with our little birds. You can do different patterns on on the birds themselves if you want to. And just, just have some fun with it, really. <laughs> just, just, there we go. So let's just put that, like, oh, I'm running out of ink. Let's just see if I can get a little bit more out of that one. There we go, like that. I think I've made this that a little bit too long. Never mind, they can just have really long legs. These These birds down here can have long legs. which can add to the quirkiness. <laughs> oh, that's quite sweet. That is actually quite sweet. And you, know, you could go around the edges if you want to. Let's do that. Oh, there we go. And you could put patterns, different patterns on them as well. So it's one of those projects that can be just developed, can't it? You can have it as simple or as complicated as you want. Let's just pop that one in there. But I think they're really, really cute. And it's, they're great fun to do. There we go. Let's do that. Let's put a little wing in there. And finish off this one. There we go. <laughs> oh, let's do this one. Let's see, this, uh, I've done the others. Okay, right, now I'm going to go on to the next thing that I'm going to show you. Which again, is just creating an individual one, and I'll show you how I use this in an art journal. Now, I absolutely love working in journals and sketchbooks and I have sketchbooks of all different sizes. This one is a seriously messy one for when I don't really know what I'm doing and I just want to create something. <laughs> and I just put all sorts of things in my art journals. Now if you want to learn more about art journaling I do have some tutorials on those and I will link those below. But I do like little mini ones, little mini concertina ones like this, which is fun. And that one's a blank one, so might do something with that one. And this is another one here. And I like poetry and I like writing um, myself, so I will put in ideas. But I'm going to do it in this one. Now this is a concertina journal. It's a proper junk journal, actually. It's made out of old bits of a computer programming book from the 1990s I think that I picked up no I think this one was one that my husband had um, many many years ago so there's lots of ideas and thoughts and stuff like that but what I want to do is to take one of the pages and put a little bird on it so if you're not kind of sure even how to start with a journal I would just encourage you to play now I'm going to use this page and I'm going to put my little bird here and I might put another another little one here. Now I've got all my my pieces here so I could just go straight in and and create my little bird exactly as we did before but I'm going to do something slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 
our little bird onto a black piece of paper like this and I will I will show you how to do it um, and how to use the glue and all of that kind of stuff if you if you're not really sure but it's very very simple and again it's something that um, young children can do as well now I'm going to use some black card and some bright neon card so did that break white wake you up <laughs> it's very bright isn't it I love it and we're just going to make I'm just gonna tear that with my ruler now I want these birds to be a little bit smaller than the ones so these are the ones that we did before um so all we need to do is to just trim them up a little bit so I'm going to take again keeping the same shape I'm just going to make them a, this one a little bit smaller like that and let's just we want to make sure that we're using the space quite well because we're going to be cutting it out so Let's just sort of move it, move it around a little bit to see what's going to work. Again, I think this might be a bit too big as well. Let's just that one's quite fun like that. And you know, sometimes you want the feather to be the tail feather to be over the top, or sometimes underneath. Just you work it out. Or again, you might have the feather up that end. This one's beginning to look a bit like a fish, isn't it? But <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. And again, you can put some other other bits on it as well, and to see what it's like. Now, I'm going to stick those, stick this on. Maybe not that one. Maybe not that one. But I quite like this this combination here. I'm going to use my glue stick, and what I'm going to do is get a piece of scrap paper page from a magazine that I hang on to just going to push that down a little bit like that and this is when I'm teaching children as well how to use a glue stick you need to have a piece of scrap paper because you want to make sure that you go right to the edges and if you do this onto a table the table gets very very sticky there we go you're going to get really sticky anyway <laughs> this just makes it easier and then the other thing I do is I get them to again get a scrap of paper a bit of newspaper and then rub it down over the top like that and that will keep it nice and neat so again using my scrap of paper like this I mean, you could also use glue dots as well but they can work out quite expensive can't they Right, let's just do that one there again. I just get my get there. And there we are. All right, let's now think about our little bird. I'm going to get my black to put her eye there, and then the the feathers like this. And then her wing. But obviously, because this is on black, what we're going to need now is white. Or you could use gold and silver. That would work as well. These are acrylic pens. And there we have our little bird. And what we're going to do now is cut her out. So, again, just that bit and so we'll have a black background for our little bird there we go so you can cut out as much or as little as you want and then I'll get my journal page put her in like that so you can see how you can start to build up your journal and then you could write a little poem about a bird you could find a poem you could just write something about it 
and we get all of those sorts of things. So I'm going to do a few more and then we will finish up with all of the things that I've done. Oh, I really have enjoyed doing this. So I've put these two little ones in my junk journal. A little bird's journey. And then that got me thinking. So I thought, hmm, how about a bookmark with a little, little poem? And I can just pop that into my book like that little bird can just pop out. I thought that was quite fun. And then the last thing I did was to make a card, a little, little greeting card like that with just the, with the little birds on there. So let's uh, put these together. Let's have those. And I hope you've got lots and lots of ideas of the sort of things that you could do with your little birds. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. There are so many things that you could do, aren't there? Just let me know. Let me know in the comments what you're going to do with your little birds, whether you're going to put them onto a, um, a freeze and uh, create kind of a larger piece, or whether you're just going to use them individually in an art journal or going to make little greetings cards, something like that. I would love to see what you have done. So if you want to join the Facebook group, you could post them on there. And it's such a friendly place. It's such a friendly place. So if you want to see some more and if you want to catch up on all those collage pieces, you could look at this one or this one. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.